My name is Narumon Thapjumphon. I'm an assistant professor in politics at the Faculty of Political Science, Chulalongkorn University. Now I'm also the director of the Master of Arts and Doctor of Philosophy in International Development Study, or we call Medgrid of Chulalongkorn, and also the director of the ASEAN Research Center for Migration. So all, both all this work related to the issue of democracy, human rights, and also international development study. In the last five years, we see a lot of change in ASEAN. Uh, for instance, we see the elections in Malaysia and in Cambodia. Uh, many people see Malaysia as a kind of hope that people can change at least to get the new coalition uh, for the changing in Malaysia, but many people also question about the quality of democracy in Malaysia. In Cambodia, it even gets worse. Before the election in Cambodia, we might also heard that uh, opposition party has been put under pressure, even have to be closed. So that's why even though we have the election, the landslide with the uh, people party of the Cambodia, but people still asking that is it's only procedure, but not the substance. For Myanmar, I think in 2015, three years ago, many people also have a very high hope because the NLD after 20 years from 1990 and also a lot such a long time uh, under dictator, Myanmar have a very lands right with the democratic group with the NLD election. But now we can see that three years after November 2015, uh, Myanmar still struggle for the issue of democracy. The NLD government cannot control the Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Defense, and Ministry of Border Affairs. And I think the case of the Rohingya crisis, uh, even though people might blame about the government, but one thing that we have to realize is that the NLD government cannot control the military, which is under the Ministry of Defense. So that's one kind of issue. Next year, Thailand is going to be the chairperson of ASEAN, but Thailand is still struggle for democracy. We talking about next year election, actually it's more than a year. We have four year full time of an elected government, which is very different because it's very few for us to have a full term for the elected government, but we have a full time of an elected government. The Prime Minister already mentioned that under the roadmap, Thailand will have election in February next year, 2019, but nobody sure. We even have a joke saying that uh, next year we will have Indonesia election. We will have election before or after Indonesia. And since the crisis in Thailand, people start talking that November 2020 will be Myanmar election. Will Thailand before? or after. As an optimistic person, we hope that Thailand should uh, keep its promise in a sense that we should have election next year, February 2019, or at least within 2019, but nobody can confirm. Under the UDSR, uh, the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, one issue that we are seeing is that the spirit of the UDHR is still relevant, especially on the issue of the uh, civil and political right, economic, social, and cultural right. But using the UN mechanism or the UPR process may not success in terms of forcing it uh, for democracy. I was talking about maybe the issue of supply chain. I can see the issue of the human trafficking quite work when the consumer movement, when the people movement push pressure, maybe to keep the spirit of the UDHR, we might have to bring this issue back to the citizen, not only to the state power. And in that case, they might be able to put more force. Even though I'm questioning civil society that it seems to be both conservative and progressive, but I still feel that to make the spirit of the UDHR possible, you need to give more room for the 
civil society and the citizen power in order to make them to control and to create democratic development in this region.